Alright, let's calm down a little bit, okay? This is a fitness page, we're talking about blood flow restriction. But if you make it to the end of the video, it'll loop back around, so... Now, I've wanted to make a video about blood flow restriction for a while, so I'm gonna cut to this TikTok here. BFR training is super underrated, but it helps you grow your muscles fast. So stop hating and tagging your idiotic personal trainer. Hey Nina, so I'm apparently an idiotic personal trainer that knows nothing. But I know that you and I both graduated with the same kinesiology degree and I tried to explain to you why BFR was bullshit, but you blocked me. So I know you'll never see this, but I'm gonna clarify and educate the public. So all of those BFR bands you see those girls wearing around their legs, and I will link the research below. Long story short, the research that Nina is showing is from physical therapy clinical settings. These studies do not directly translate to exercise settings. And the reason why is because there needs to be a special protocol taken for them to be effective in the first place. So all those bands you see those girls wearing around their legs to grow their glutes, let's just say hypothetically they did work. Even if they did, it only causes restricted blood flow to the distal limbs, which means it would grow the legs, not the butt. So yeah, the BFR bands she's selling is bullshit, unfortunately. So Beefcake Brina, Brina, Beefcake Brina, Beefcake, actually made some really good points in this video. And while I agree with the majority of them, I also disagree with the conclusion a little bit. Personally, I like blood flow restriction and I think it can have a place in your hypertrophy training. She's absolutely right in saying that the majority of the evidence that we have is in a clinical or rehabilitation setting. And she's absolutely right in saying that we should not try and use that evidence in a clinical setting and try and ex extrapolate that to a gym setting. But we also have proof of concept. And while I'll be the first person to say mechanical tension, meaning lifting a moderately heavy load and recovering from that stimulus is always gonna be the best way to create hypertrophy. We also have a lot of evidence to suggest that, hey, mechanical stress can actually be a very powerful and synergistic stimulus for muscle growth. Damn it, I was supposed to say metabolic stress, not mechanical stress in that last clip. It is metabolic stress and the buildup of metabolites that creates that burning feeling. It's also kind of what we're going for in the blood flow restriction. So I had to subtly cut this clip in so you didn't even realize. In simple terms, that burning feeling you get when you're doing a hard set actually probably does play an important role in building muscle. So I 100% get where she's coming from with this video, but just because we don't have direct proof showing that it creates more hypertrophy also isn't evidence that it doesn't work. To me, drawing the conclusion that blood flow restriction is useless because we don't have any studies to support it isn't really how the process works. It just hasn't been studied yet. So if you made it this far in the video, the take home point is, I personally like blood flow restriction, but I definitely don't think it should be the main part of your training. However, if you enjoy it and you want to do it at the end of your workout to stimulate metabolic stress, get a little bit of a pump on, I don't think it's gonna do you any harm. Would love to hear what you guys think in the comments and looking forward to adult mature discussions. Fine, you can have that first video again. But coming back to her other point, which is actually what I wanted to make a video on initially. Let's just say hypothetically they did work. Even if they did, it only causes restricted blood flow to the distal limbs, which means it would grow the legs, not the butt. Blood flow restriction is only going to work on the actual limbs that are occluded, the actual limbs that have blood flow restricted. That is, as she said, the distal limbs. If I cut off here, it is down the arm that's not gonna get blood. If I cut off at the leg, it's gonna be below that. There really isn't any reason, and we don't really have any um, biological plausibility to think that there's gonna be some kind of effect back up the body. biceps so he has the band above the bicep above the muscle that he's wanting to work if you look at this girl and what a lot of girls are doing she has the bands below the muscle she's wanting to work because she's wanting to aim for her glutes which is incorrect circulatory system 101 blood from your heart your arteries bring that blood away into your limbs through arteries and then back through veins to your heart so basically if you're cutting off blood flow here it's probably not gonna create much growth in your shoulders. If you're cutting it off at the quad, it's not really gonna affect your glutes. The only exception to that may be if you're using a male intercourse toy because we only have enough blood flow to power one of these and if you're trapping it down there, you're probably not gonna get a lot going on up here. 
so choose wisely. And the thing is, we do have some evidence in actually elite athletes showing that potentially it does increase hypertrophy. There's a few studies done with rugby players, powerlifters, uh, just to name a few. But the problem is these aren't often tested against the control very well. The control group is often using no blood flow restriction, but still using very light load, which is not the point of training. If you're not using the blood flow restriction, you're gonna be using a heavier weight. So the evidence we have isn't super helpful at this point, but it's at least proof of concept. Personally, I've been using blood flow restriction at home during lockdowns. A lot of us are still in COVID isolation or COVID lockdowns and blood flow, I think can be a useful tool for increasing the intensity. I'll use them here, for example, around my arms to try and get more stimulus on my triceps when I'm doing push-ups. For me, you know, if I'm doing body weight push-ups and I need to do a set of however many reps to go to failure, you know, maybe it's 30 reps before they get really, really hard. I can chuck on the blood flow restriction bands and I start to fail because of my triceps at around the 12 or 15 rep mark, just as an example. Now in that regard, I think blood flow restriction can have a use. Am I planning on doing it instead of my regular gym training once gyms are open again? Probably not. But I also don't think there's any downside in doing something a little bit novel, uh, just to make things interesting if nothing else. Same thing for legs. Training legs at home sucks, right? It's pretty boring. I think that it's completely valid to use blood flow restriction bands uh, to bring that failure point down a little bit and make your training a little bit more interesting. Hey my bunnies, BFR training is super underrated but it helps you grow your muscles faster with lower weights. There are so many studies out there that prove that it works. So stop hating and tagging your idiotic personal trainers that don't know anything. BFR training started in Japan on patients that had muscle atrophy, basically no muscle, right? And look at the huge difference it makes in a very short amount of time. Let me show you some more examples. This female patient had cerebral palsy and could not move her arms. But after training, she was able to move her arms. Here was an athlete in Japan who was gonna retire because of an injury, but then he tried this method and had a badass comeback. This idea started in the 1960s from Dr. Sato when he was kneeling at a memorial service and felt his muscles get so tight. Respectfully, we should be calling it katsu training because he's the shit. And that's everything we've got for today. I hope you've got some value from this. Um, as always, I really appreciate if you can give me a like and subscribe. All the followers help try and beat the YouTube algorithm. And I've got a link to a Buy Me A Coffee page. If you guys wanna support the hustle and the grind and me trying to put out as much free content as I can across so many different forms of social media, um, hit that link and feel free to chip in a little bit to buying me a coffee because I'm in Denmark now and coffee is very expensive over here. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Oh, and drop in the comments what you'd like to see me do a video on. I've got a bunch of ideas coming up, but I want to know what kind of information you guys want to know. Chat soon.